I'm sorry I introduced myself this morning, I believe, as the project manager of this mission. That's West Coast Jet Lag setting in. I'm the project, uh, uh, the uh, principal investigator for the Ionosphere Connection, Connection, Connection Explorer, and uh, which we call ICON. Uh, I'd like to point out, I don't have, I didn't even have time to pull down everyone's uh, logos, but uh, we have a number of people working on this project, including Peter Harvey and Alan Taylor, who were on Themis, Stephen Mendy, uh, who uh, worked on Image and several other missions, and uh, Chris Engler, a uh, number of uh, great people with uh, hardware experience. I also am going to work on that one slide uh, summary. Um, not there yet. So, but I do have just a few slides. Oh gosh, I guess I could have checked this out before I. Next slide, please. All right. So I want to give a scientific summary because I uh, give you some indication of why we're excited about this mission, and uh, why we really want to do this, and uh, we think we've got a good way to, of going about it. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, say this is a heliophysics mission studying the uh, equatorial ionosphere of the Earth. Mainly the uh, focus because uh, the densest plasma between Earth and Sun is created and trapped in the magnetic field of Earth's equatorial ionosphere. And as such, it's an excellent plas natural plasma laboratory for uh, uh, a number of plasma, natural plasma processes, universal processes, uh, occur down uh, at low, uh, near the equator. Now, one of these is a light. Yeah, right. So, um, if everyone could see that. So there's been a number of images from LEO, uh, high, uh, high Earth Orbit, and uh, now new platforms, including radio tomographic platforms, that produce images of the Earth, be there through a photometer from uh, Dynamics Explorer, which first showed us the indication of the equatorial air glow bands. And these eclipses, sort of, this is an iconic image of the space age, actually, really, I think, <clears throat> which shows the aurora, the Earth's exosphere, and the uh, equatorial air glow bands that straddle the magnetic equator. Uh, later missions including image, uh, in the F, carried an FUV imager. This is an FUV picture, far ultraviolet. Another FUV image here from image showed these fantastic, showed real interesting structure in these bands, and and of course timed launched in 2002, gave us a very good close look at, at these bands and gave us an indication of how variable they were. Um, also point out that there's a number of scientific processes that have been discovered, or a number of physical processes that surprised everyone when they were found uh, this decade, such as the extraction of plasma from the low latitudes and drawing them over up into high latitudes into the polar regions over D.C., uh, here showing the east coast of, of, of the U.S. being uh, inundated by uh, high-density plasma from low latitudes. And then these, this picture here shows what you look like is two different color bars, but these are two different images from conjugate points on the Earth, 6,000 uh, miles apart, one in Australia, this is in Darwin, and one in Japan, showing these conjugate, pro uh, conjugate waves in the ionosphere <clears throat> coming from no one knows what. So anyway, after a decade of scientific surprises, it is clear without a complete set of observations of all the drivers and effects in this remarkable re region of space, we cannot answer the high priority scientific questions that are now plain. Next slide, please. And uh, this is just, a, these are average pictures of the ionosphere. This one's taken uh, from timed in July of 2002, and this is January 2003. This is a Mercator plot, magnetic coordinates, so this is, the, this is just straddling the equator. See this massive change in the ionosphere. That would never have been predicted by anyone uh, and couldn't be explained for a while when time found it until uh, at the same time scientific models started showing that when you introduce energy into the atmosphere, in the troposphere, in the rainforest, you start, the, the atmosphere moves, starts beginning to move together in tides forming these large temperature enhancements. This is at 100 kilometers altitude, so at the edge of space, you're driving these very large changes in temperature and winds that, that really look to be connected. Next slide, please. And we can simulate that effect. This is, uh, if you look from uh, north to south on the equator, it gets, uh, uh, or south to north, it gets bright, dim, bright again. And we can simulate, we can say, okay, this is sort of the range, this is the sort of the dim part of portion, this is a, a bright ionosphere, we can simulate that by changing the electric field in, say, an electric uh, ionospheric model. But there's a number of other drivers you can 
you can push in the same model to give you pretty much the same answer. So the point is uh, <clears throat> we want to separate out these drivers to understand the system response. Next slide, please. So ICON is designed uh, in part to answer uh, those kinds of questions. ICON carries a wind imager uh, per, uh, measuring uh, winds 90 degrees offset, so you can rebuild from separate observations a uh, wind vector at every particular point where these fields of view uh, eventually cross. Uh, I'll get to, I'll help understand that in a minute. Uh, with uh, so in in the RAM direction, there's a there's a field of view that we keep clear for the electric uh, plasma drift instrument, which gives you electric fields, and off to the side we do imaging. So as the ICON in its 24 degree orbit at 550 kilometers altitude um, uh, comes flying along past some point on the in the ionosphere that you're interested in, uh, first it takes a wind measurement of that uh, at the the foot point of these magnetic field lines and uh, also in the ionosphere. And then later it's, inter it's on those field lines intersecting that position, me uh, measuring the electric field on that field line where you're measuring the winds. Also it takes images in the EUV and the FUV to retrieve all the imp other important parameters. And then uh, three and a half minutes later it makes the final wind measurement. So we're, uh, these are the instruments and the uh, quantities we're after to answer these uh, questions. And I think that's it. <laughs>